Hi guys, IGCSC O level chemistry paper 22, June 2016, question one. The particles of a substance gain energy and change from a regular ordered structure to a disordered structure with large distances between the particles. Which change of state is described? So this is a change of state going directly from a solid to a gas. So the change of state from a solid to a gas is known as sublimation so it is not boiling it is not evaporation and it is not melting this makes option d the correct option for this question question two in the chromatography experiment shown which labels represent the solvent front c represents the solvent itself d represents the base line and B is the distance traveled by a sample spot. So this is known as the solute front. And A represents the distance traveled by the solvent. So this is referred to as the solvent front. This makes option A the correct option for this question. Question three, X is a mixture of colorless compounds. The diagram shows a chromatogram of X and of the three pure substances P, Q, and R. So X contains P, X does not contain Q, X contains an unknown component, which is not P, Q, or R, and X contains R. So X contains P and R and an unknown component. So, which statement is not correct? A locating agent was used to develop the chromatogram of X because these are colorless compounds, so a locating agent must be used. P and R could be present in X, yes. P and R have different solubilities in the solvent. That is why the distance traveled by P and R are different. Q has a greater RF value than R. Q travels a lesser distance compared to R. So, the RF value of R would be greater than the RF value of Q. This The RF value depends on the distance traveled. So the statement says Q has a greater RF value than R. So the statement is incorrect, making option D the correct option for this question. Question four, which statements about isotopes of the same element are correct? They are atoms which have the same chemical properties because they have the same number of electrons in their outer shell. Yes, that is the reason why atoms of the or the isotopes have the same chemical properties. They are atoms which have the same number of electrons and neutrons but different number of protons. No, they have the same number of electrons and protons but different number of neutrons. This statement is incorrect. They are atoms which have the same number of electrons and protons but different number of neutrons. This statement is correct. Since statements 1 and 3 are correct, option B is the correct option for this question. Question 5. The table shows the electronic structure of four atoms, W, X, Y, and Z. Which two atoms combine to form a covalent compound? So the electronic configuration of W is 2 at once. That means it belongs to group 1. For X, the configuration is 284, so it belongs to group 4. For Y, it, the configuration is 287, so it belongs to group 7. And for Z, the configuration is 288, so it belongs to group 8. So Z gets eliminated because it is unreactive, because it is a noble gas. W is in group 1, so it will form ionic compounds. So we are left with X and Y. X belongs to group 4. An element from group 4 is carbon. And Y belongs to group 7, an element from uh, group 7 is chlorine. So X and Y together will form a compound CCl4, carbon tetrachloride, which is the same as XY4. So these are covalent compounds. So since X and Y are forming covalent compounds, option C is the correct option for this question. Question six, which statement describe the attractive forces between molecules or intermolecular forces? 
they are strong covalent bonds no first of all they are not strong and they are not covalent bonds which hold molecules together this is the description of a covalent bond itself they are strong ionic bonds no which hold molecules together no strong ionic bonds hold ions together which is the description of ionic bonding they are weak forces yes form between covalently bonded molecules yes that is what intermolecular forces are and they are weak forces yes which hold ions together in a lattice no they hold molecules together in a lattice is okay they hold they are uh, holding molecules together in a lattice so weak forces uh, this makes option c the correct option for this question Question 7. Metals consist of a lattice of positive ions in a sea of electrons. Why is aluminum malleable? That means why can aluminum be drawn into shapes? Its ions are attracted to sea of electrons. This is the description of the metallic bonding, not why it is malleable. Its ions are tightly packed together. Again, description of the metallic bonding, not why aluminum is malleable. Its ions repel each other. No, this is incorrect. It's layers of ions can slide over each other. Yes, that is the reason. Because the layers can slide over each other, the metals can be drawn into shapes by moving the layers over each other. So that is why all metals, including aluminum, are malleable. So this makes option D the correct option for this question. Question 8. A sample of 16 grams of a metal oxide MO is reduced to 12.8 grams of the metal M. What is the relative atomic mass of M? Okay, so the reaction is MO producing M and releasing oxygen. So the mass of MO is 16 grams. Mass of metal M is 12.8 grams. So mass of oxygen would be 16 minus 12.8, which would give us 3.2 grams of oxygen. So, moles of oxygen would be equal to 3.2 upon its AR, which is 16, giving us a value of 0 0.2 moles. So, MO and oxygen, the molar ratio is 1 is to 0 0.2. So, in order to convert this into a whole number, we multiply this by 5. So, the ratio becomes 5 is to 1. Now, since the AR of oxygen is 16, what would be the MR of metal oxide? So, this would become 16 upon 1 into 5, which will give us an MR value of 80. 80 is the MR of MO. So, AR of M would be equal to 80 minus 16, which is the AR of oxygen which gives us a value of 64. Therefore, this makes option B the correct option for this question. Question 9. The equation for the reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid is shown. How many moles of calcium carbonate will give 24 centimeter cube of carbon dioxide when reacted with an excess of acid? So, 1 mole of calcium carbonate produces 1 mole of CO2 and 1 mole of any gas at RTP occupies a volume of 24,000 centimeter cube. Now, we don't know how many moles of carbon dioxide gas are produced, but the volume is 24 cm cube. So, we calculate the moles by dividing 24 by 24,000 and multiplying this ratio by 1, which gives us a value of 0 0.001 moles. And this makes option D the correct option for this question. Question 10. The diagram shows the electrolysis of molten zinc chloride. So zinc will be produced at the anode and chlorine gas would be produced at the... No, zinc would be produced at the cathode and chlorine gas would be produced at the anode because zinc is obtained by reduction and chlorine obtained by oxidation. So oxidation takes place at the anode, so chlorine will be there at the anode. Okay, which statement is correct? Oxidation occurs at electrode X, yes, that is the anode, 
and the equation is 2 Cl minus gives Cl2 plus 2 electrons. Correct. Oxidation occurs at ele electrode Y. No. Reduction does. And the equation is Zn2 plus plus 2 electrons gives that and the equation is correct. Reduction occurs at electrode X. No, that would be oxidation. And the equation is also incorrect because chlorine is produced here. Reduction occurs at electrode Y. Yes, reduction occurs at electrode Y. And uh, the equation is this. The equation is incorrect. Therefore, option A is the correct option for this question.